everybody, Derek here from Badgerland Burning. Today I wanted to talk about something that's been getting a lot of press recently, unfortunately, negative press, and that was one building in Chicago called McCormick Place, where there were apparently like around a thousand birds that died in one morning just from hitting this one building. And it was going around social media, a bunch of people were talking about it, and there, it didn't seem like there was really anything to be done. Um, but our friend Nick Parlberg sent us a link to this petition um, so I thought we would talk a little bit about it and you guys can go and sign the petition if you'd like. I already did. I think it's a good cause and I hope that they're able to do something about it. And birds often hit buildings, especially ones with like just loads of glass. But when there's some big event like this, it really is eye opening to just how many birds die from these buildings and what things we can do to actually prevent it. So just a little bit about the background, it says, the tragic death of nearly a thousand birds in the McCormick Lakeside facility on October 5th is a strong wake-up call about the potential for mass casualties if lights are not extinguished. I'm assuming the buildings still have their lights on, which is rather unfortunate. Waste power and kills birds. Um, it says they've been told many times that simply requiring their exhibitors to draw curtains or turn off lights at the end of the day would prevent 80% of bird deaths they refuse to do. So if you want to go and sign this petition, uh, I believe it's October 24th is the last day. So they're trying to get to 10,000. They're at 7,128 signatures at the recording of this video. But uh, would love for you to go do that. But there's also some other stuff I wanted to go over, which is why birds hit windows in the first place and what you can do on the individual level to help. So this article uh, by the Cornell Lab is talking about the two main reasons why birds hit windows. And so the first thing is that they see reflections of like the vegetation in the glass and they think, oh, that's a good place I can go. And then they just ram into the window. And then at night, if they see lights in that window, um, they'll kind of get confused. So it says for reasons not entirely understood, lights divert nocturnal migrants from their original path, especially in low ceiling or foggy conditions. So they mill about sometimes colliding with one another or another lighted structure. Uh, so there's been uh, initiatives to like turn all the lights out. So if you live in a certain area, it's like from this time to this time, we're trying to get everyone to turn the lights off to prevent those collisions from migrating birds. But here are some other things you can do on the individual level. So if you have existing windows, you can treat it with certain paints or soaps to um, get kind of a pattern on the outside so the birds don't really see into your window. You can also put decals up that kind of alerts the birds, hey, this isn't a natural area, I can't go in there. You could put dot patterns and tape up, uh, these things called Zen curtains as well. Installing mosquito screens over your windows if they're outside also works. We actually have those on the outside of the windows here. And we do have birds that hit the window sometimes, but it's hitting the screen. So normally they just kind of bounce off. And it should also be noted that Cooper's hawks will, and other predators will use the windows to their advantage. They'll go scare birds and they'll hit the window and then they'll be able to feed on the stunned bird. So that's like some crafty predation stuff right there. Uh, but you can also put netting on the outside or one way transparent films. So there's a lot of options where you can cover your windows up and uh, help prevent birds from crashing into them. For new homes and stuff, uh, you can kind of add this stuff more easily just because like as you're building it and something cool is the Milwaukee Bucks stadium that they built is super bird friendly. So they took all that into consideration, which is cool because that's in Milwaukee kind of in part of that migratory flyway. So it'd be nice if other places like McCormick Place would take the initiative and turn their lights off or help prevent birds from hitting those windows. And it all, this article also talks about the lights out initiatives. Um, so, you know, turning off all those non-essential lights at certain times in certain places. Then this article also talks about what to do if you have a bird that hits a window. Um, you can sometimes keep it in like a box or someplace quiet and dark and safe until it's ready to go. Sometimes they'll just be stunned and they'll, you know, take off after a little bit. Other times they won't make it, which is sad, but it does happen. And uh, they just talk about some other things you can do for this. So we'll put a link to this and the... Um, the uh, petition here in the description. And also, I just wanted to take a look at McCormick Place because I had no idea what it looked like. And it just looks like a, a glass monster. Like there's so many windows in this thing. You could see why birds would just kind of fly right into it. So this is on the radar because of that one really bad day of birds hitting that, uh, that, that building. But it's really kind of put this in the forefront of, hey, we need to be doing things 
to prevent this. And there's some really easy things you can do. So I feel like if we all work together and we get other companies and things on board, we can help bring this number down. But it, it was really sad event, but there are some things we can do. So we hope uh, everyone out there is able to take some initiative on this. And thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. Yeah.